Okay, we're going to be doing a session on setting a cloisonne piece. This metalsmithing um, is directed at people that are, probably don't have a lot of metal experience. What I'm trying to do is give you the rudimentary skills that you need in order to make a sterling setting for a cloisonne piece and set it uh, easily, inexpensively, and uh, successfully. So <clears throat> most of my uh, cloisonne pieces are um, about the same height. There's quite, quite a bit of slope on the, the edges of them, so I have a lot of uh, area that I can put a um, bezel um, burnish down over the top of and hold that piece in a setting. So, um, so the shape of the piece, the, the shape of the edge of the piece is going to be important in your setting process. So if you should have a piece like this one that has wires that extend uh, across the edge of the piece, you're going to want to make sure that none of those wires um, are that there's a bump at any of those wires. And um, right now, this piece does have some of those little bumps on the edge. But I'm going to be uh, sanding this and, and uh, polishing this to a finish so that I'll be removing those. So um, uh, that, that will help with, the, with making sure that my bezels are nice and smooth on the edges. So if, you've, if you have wires that go to the edge, you have to pay particular attention to those when you're finishing your cloisonne piece. Okay, so the wire that I, the bezel wire that I often use for my silver pieces is 28 gauge by 3 32nds of an inch and it's fine silver which is going to be very soft and easy to manipulate. So the way that you tell if the, the bezel is high enough is when, if, when you put your piece um, in, in, into a strip of this bezel, that uh, bezel should extend up over the edge of the piece. Let me do a little drawing here for you so that you can see what it is that we're aiming for. So here's my bezel height there, and uh, here's my cloisonne height. So what you need is this space here. If you're, if you're, because you're going to burnish this part down over the piece, and that's going to be what holds it in. Okay. So if you're. Uh, if your bezel doesn't come up high enough on the edge of your piece, then you won't have enough material on top of your piece to hold it into the setting. So that's how you determine what your height is going to be. So this one needs to be that high in order to um, come drop down over the edge of the piece. All right, so I'm going to take my bezel wire and I'm going to make a perfectly perpendicular cut um, on that bezel wire so that I have a right angle there. Let me, let me get something that's a different color here. Okay, so this is cut at a right angle. And, um, and, and you need to have both ends of your bezel be uh, perpendicular. Okay, so... Then I'm going to take this cloisonne wire, and I'm, I mean, I'm going to take this bezel wire and wrap it around my piece like that. Had to get my pen open. Wrap it around my piece like that, and then I'm going to mark that place where they cross. And um, then I'm going to cut this end perpendicular to the piece. Okay. 
when you cut this bezel wire with, with nippers like this, then um, the end of that is going to be shaped into a point because the inside and well both sides of the nippers have um, cut this with a with a pinch instead of cutting it at a uh, at a flush even when they're called flush cut they don't they still leave a pinch on them okay so what we're going to do is we're going to take a um, file and file that little point off of there so that on both ends of the bezel we're going to have a nice um, very flush edge on it Okay, and then I'm going to bring the two ends of the wire together. Okay, uh, once I get it so that um, both sides of the um, of the the cut on the bezel are lined up, so this way, this way, and this way, then I'm going to go ahead and set it onto a, char uh, um, a soldering block and uh, and solder it. Okay, here's my uh, flux in a little dish, and I have some hard cut solder snippets cut into there. I'm going to take my brush, and I'm going to paint on both sides of the joint. I'm going to take one little piece of solder and set it right there, right on the joint. So, in I really do want to have this little piece of solder touching both sides of the joint, which it now is. Okay, I've turned down my flame. That's my gas. And now I'm gonna turn on my oxygen until I get a nice little point on my flame, like that. All right. And then I'm going to dry this joint carefully so that I don't um, boil my flux and blow my little piece of solder off of there. Okay, once it's dry, I can move in and I want to heat both sides of the bezel evenly so that the solder will flow between the two, which it did. Now I'm going to turn off my uh, oxygen first and my gas second. Hope I made that look easy. Okay, that's beautiful. My bezel looks great. I usually look at the, the top and bottom of the bezel to see if one side is lined up slightly better than the other side because if it is, I would want to put that side uh, of the bezel towards the top. And now I just stretch this over the uh, top of that piece there 
and um, you can see how good this fit is. It's it is right down on on the piece, and that was because I uh, measured it well. So um, so this piece is the perfect fit for this. So I have a couple of little uh, bumps in here. Uh, let me see if I can show you that. Well, okay, on the edge of my bench, I'm going to take. I'm going to take my piece and roll it on the edge of the bench just to make sure that I get any of those little ripples out of there. All right, and then the the bezel should be touching the um, workbench everywhere. Okay, so um, anyway, that's the. That's what it's going to look like. Now I'm going to put this, uh, this seam at the bottom of this piece. Alright. Alright, I'm going to take, take a piece of, this is 26 gauge sterling silver. And I'm going to draw around the outside of that all right this is a six out blade and burr life for lubricant All right, I'm gonna stamp these this piece with my signature. I'm notoriously bad at stamping, so let's hope I don't have have that be bad. Oh, it looks good. Okay, and then I'm going to stamp it with my 925 stamp, which means sterling. Okay, and that looks good. I got lucky there. Okay, now I'm going to take a um, little bit of um, 320 sandpaper. And I'm going to sand the bezel on this piece. So I'm going to push the uh, I'm going to push the piece up in the bezel a little bit. So I'm not actually sanding the back of the piece. I'm just sanding the silver around the outside. But I keep the um, piece in there to uh, keep from distorting the bezel. And I want to have this uh, sanded everywhere because um, the, the more surface area that I have to solder with, the more successful I'm going to be. Just trust me, you want to sand this down so that it's um, as flat as you can get it. All right, that looks good. Now, now blow it and get rid of the excess there. And now we're going to go back over to the torch. All right. Okay. 
I have my little piece of silver. This is the, the, the back side of it. This is the side that I'm going to solder to. So I want to have that side be very clean. So I buy sheets of Scotch-Brite and then I cut them into little squares for myself so that they're handy for me to use. And I'm going to clean this up. And then I'm going to set this down on my block. And I'm going to take a, a mixture of boric acid and alcohol. Now, boric acid is something you buy as eye wash at the drugstore. And denatured alcohol, um, you can actually use isopropyl. Um, anyway, this is an old jeweler's trick for um, preventing fire scale on sterling. So you just want to uh, put some of that on the back of your piece. And then you're going to light your torch. And catch that on fire so that we burn off all of the uh, alcohol out of the piece. That was fun, huh? All right, and then I want to keep track of where my uh, where my signature was, and I put it down here. So I'm going to pick this up, and I'm going to turn it over with the signature in the same spot. So usually you can see the indentations from uh, from the punches on the backside also, but um, it helps to remember where they are. All right, and then I'm going to take my um, my bezel off of here, and I'm going to set it down on my silver. So the next little thing is rather important. You have to make sure that your um, that your sheet is flat, and that your bezel is contacting it everywhere because that's going to be the difference between a successful, easy solder job and one that might not be so successful. So, all right, I need to cut a little more solder. So, I'm, again, I'm using my Scotch-Brite to clean my solder. And I'm going to use my favorite pair of cutters to cut this with. Um, if anybody ever finds these cutters, uh, I would buy a half dozen pair. They are so nice, and they were this this pair was given to me by a friend um, a long time ago, and I really love it. And the cool part about this is that the little bits of solder stay in the little tube. Um, so here now, I'm going to put, I'm going to open this and pour it in. All right, so now I've got a bunch of solder cut for my job. Okay, this is Batter and Self-Pickling Flux, and um, this is my favorite gold and silver flux because it doesn't bubble all up and move your stuff around. And uh, I actually keep it in, uh, in a little dropper bottle so that it's easier for me to uh, manage on a daily basis. So. Okay. 
just painting all the way around the inside with my um, flux and now I'm going to pick up a bunch of solder and I'm going to dry off my brush and start shoving that solder up to the edge. Uh, once again, the reason I dry off my brush is because I want to sop up the majority of the liquid here so I don't have it boiling and blowing my little solder snippets around. So I'm just continuing to dry out the majority of this flux in here. All right, move this out of the way. That's the, that's the flame that I want. All right, now I'm gonna just heat this very carefully, uh, carefully and slowly so that I don't boil my flux. Okay, I did move a piece. So I'm not gonna use my brush to move that back in there because I would uh, burn my breast brush, breast bristles, breast, brush bristles <laughs> okay all right that's dry so now i'm going to go straight into the middle of the piece and i'm going to heat the center of the piece and i'm done So I'm going to throw that into the pickle. Well, that's in the pickle. I wanted to draw a little explanation of what uh, what you're going for when you're soldering. I have my my bezel, and I'm soldering it down to a back plate. But if you took the volume of this back plate and melt it into a ball. You, your volume of your back plate is about like that, and the volume of your bezel is about like that. So, in order for the solder to flow in between those two pieces, the um, the two volumes of metal have to be hot. They have to get to the melting temperature of the solder at the same time. So here you are, you're heating from above this little bezel. Here's your flame, okay? And if you're heating right above the bezel, then you're gonna be heating this little ball and your solder's gonna to flow towards this ball and go up here and it's not gonna come down here and it's not gonna solder. So what you wanna do is you wanna um, direct your heat at the bigger volume of metal out here because this is going to get hot whether you try to get it hot or not. So you're directing your heat over here and um, heating this and then when you think it's about the melting temperature then you're going to sweep over here and your solder should flow between those two. If it doesn't, then you go back to your bigger piece of metal and you continue heating there and then you sweep over here and, and if it doesn't uh, solder this time, then you go back to your big piece. So this is what I call the safety zone. Well, when you're working from the top of a bezel like this, your safety zone is right in the middle of here. 
because your flame is going to be um, it's going to be bouncing off the middle and going towards the outside of this thing anyway. Um, so it's going to heat up this bezel whether you uh, whether you direct any heat there or not. So um, so you want to keep your heat off of that bezel, heat in the safety zone, and then every once in a while you're going to sweep around the outside and then go back to the middle. If you sweep around the outside and it, and it flows, you're done. Take away your torch. But if you sweep around the outside and it doesn't flow, then you go back to the middle, continue to heat, and then sweep around the outside. And on one of those sweeps, the solder is going to flow and, you're go and you'll be done. If you get this bezel too hot before the back plate is hot enough, then the little snippets of solder are just going to run up the bezel and you will never get it to, to solder. So at that point, you have to let it cool and you're going to have to reflux it and put a few more snippets of solder down um, and kind of start over. But a lot of times I'll leave it set up like that. Okay, hope that helps. Okay, once you get it out of the, um, the pickle pot, which I, I use sulfuric acid, but there's a lot of other things that are available these days. Um, so you just want to look at your bezel all the way around, make sure that every single uh, millimeter is, is uh, fused down. And, uh, and then now we're going to go and trim off this edge. And you can use a file for this, you can use sandpaper for this. Um, I happen to do it on a um, power sander because it's really fast. But uh, I'm going to get my file so I can show you. Okay. All right, so you're going to just sand or file on this until you're right up to the edge, right up to the edge of the bezel, okay? Okay, once I have uh, sanded this, you can see it's right up to the bezel. I also cleaned up the top of that bezel where the joint was so that there's not a little bit of a hump there. And, um, and now I'm going to polish this piece using White Diamond Tripoli. Okay, now I've polished my piece. You can see the polishing compound on my thumb. And, um, and this is just so that uh, we can get to the, all the areas before we solder on this little part that's going to become our bale. So, um, uh, and then you want to degrease it with uh, either dish soap or ammonia or something like that. But you, you, you need to get this clean again after you polish it. Okay. So, um, set that aside. So now we're going to use the little jump ring uh, that we made. You can probably buy these jump rings. You can buy jump rings like this from Rio Grande. I believe this one's a 16 gauge. So to open them up, you want to um, grab them with a pair of pliers. And then you want to take another pair of pliers like this. And you want to twist it like this. You don't want to ever open them like that because you, you can never make them fit again. And now I'm going to take this uh, bale and um, and put it on here. Now this bale is, these are so nice. These are made by Rio Grande. Um, this particular one is, uh, looks like 689106. Um, and um, they're sterling. And you can make your own bales, but I'll tell you, if you're just trying to get your cloisonne pieces set and, um, and, and get on with your life, then these little bales are, are just beautiful. They're, they're the right weight. They hold up really well. They're very, um, very graceful looking. 
and um, I don't unless you're gonna you know go uh, into a competition with your your cloisonne I don't see any reason to not use these beautiful little pre-made bales okay so now you're gonna uh, grab with your other your pliers and you're gonna get them so get this so that it's lined up perfectly again okay so that there's no gaps in it at all all right sometimes uh, sometimes it helps me to uh, to grab this in a chain nose plier and um, and press that joint uh, from the outside if it's not quite lined up so all right And once again, I'm going to use hard solder. So you're going to paint your joint with flux, and then you're going to take a little snippet of hard solder and um, place it right on the joint. Dry your brush so you can sop up the majority of the uh, flux off of there. Uh oh, I lost my. <laughs> I'm supposed to be making this look really easy, but um, sometimes it's not. There we go. All right. use my my little smith again here We're going to dry this very carefully so that solder piece doesn't pop off of there. And once it's dry, you can go ahead and move in and you're going to heat both sides of that joint evenly. And when it flows, you're done. Alright, I'm going to drop this in the pickle pot. Then, while that's in the pickle, I'm going to put a little mark on my setting where I want uh, to place the bail. And I happen to know that my um, my my bail will be easier to solder on if I have a little divot um, carved into my block. So I'm going to do that um, right now, just using a um, the tip of my um, of a scribe. Okay. 
meat. I'm dipping the piece into <coughs> baking soda to neutralize the acid in my pickle pot. And um, then I'm going to go scrub it up with a, a brass brush. I'll be right back. Alright, so if you're using one of these little pre-made bales, one side of it says sterling on it. You want to have that part be up at this point in the process. And I'm going to take my brush and put a little bit of flux onto my piece right there. And I'm going to grab I'm going to grab this little ring and the joint is at the opposite end of here so it's going to be hidden up inside the bale. And the bale is sitting in that little um, little dent that I carved. Now I'm going to I've just now switched to medium solder um, because this is the last solder operation. I usually use uh, hard solder for most everything. Um, Okay, and I want to once again uh, sop up most of my flux so it's not um, boiling and bubbling all over the place. All right. Now I'm going to very carefully uh, heat this so that I can dry it without having it uh, boil. Okay, so that's dry. Now I'm going to take some boric acid and alcohol and put it on the back side of here. To protect against fire scale, once again, I'm going to light that, let it burn off. Okay, so now your safety zone in this part of the solder operation is obviously this big piece of metal right here. And this is your tiny little piece of metal, so this is going to get heated up whether you want it to or not. So we're going to concentrate out here, and every once in a while sweep over to here. If it flows, we're done. If it doesn't flow, we go back to the safety zone and heat some more and then sweep up here. If it flows, we're done. If it doesn't, we're going to go back to the safety zone and, and so forth until the solder flows. All right. So here I am. I'm coming straight down onto the, the piece. The boric acid is going to get glassy. I'm going to stay out there in the safety zone. Okay, I'm going to sweep, sweep, and it went. So good. Did I make that look really easy, you guys? Okay, so now we're going to pickle this. And, um, and get rid of the boric acid and flux that's on there. And then we'll be ready to set the piece. How cool is that? Oh, 
Okie dokie, here's the home stretch. <laughs> All right, here's our setting. It's been pickled and uh, and then rinsed in uh, baking soda to neutralize the acid. And here's our peas. And um, I uh, have for years used a uh, some some kind of a cushion inside my bezel. So. For many, many years, I used chamois uh, like this. This is a, a leather. Um, and I, I used chamois particularly because of the way that it was tanned, because it doesn't deteriorate and fall apart inside the setting. So um, you have to be careful that you actually get real chamois if you're going to use chamois. The, um, the other product that I really like is a stuff called Tough Break. Um, and, um, you know, uh, the only place that I know of to get this is uh, Patsy Croft. But uh, you might, I, I would just go to her. She, uh, she seems to be the, the connection for it. So, okay, so I'm going to take my piece and I'm going to draw around the outside. And then I'm going to trim it. And you're going to cut on the inside of the line because we just drew on the outside of the piece. So it won't fit in the bezel if you cut it exactly on the line. Okay, and then I'm going to drop that in the piece, make sure it fits, and now I'm going to make sure that I get this oriented straight up and down before I pop it into the setting. Now, it is not dropping down into the setting. Um, because I've, I've bent the bezel in a little bit while I was working on it. So you don't ever want to force this piece into the setting because you will end up cracking it if you do that. So um, so what you're going to do is take your piece out of the setting and give yourself a, a little bit larger of a space to work in. like that. Now, okay, now before I drop this in there, I'm going to get it oriented perfectly because with a round piece it's really easy to put it in the setting just a little bit crooked and then uh, you got to get it back out of there. So, yep, I like that. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and drop it in to the setting. Make sure it's all the way to the base. Looking good. Okay, now I'm going to look at it one more time. I'm going to hold this up uh, so that I can see what it looks like hanging to see if it really looks like it's straight. And it does look like it's straight. So, okay. So now we're going to burnish the piece into the setting. I like to have the piece kind of on the edge of my workbench to do this. So let's see if I can get you so you can see that. There it is. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna use this burnisher as if it's part of my thumb. 
and I'm going to come up over the top of the piece and just burnish the silver down to the top of the cloisonne a little bit at a time. Alright, when I get to that spot, uh, let me find my. I need to get in between the bale and the um, piece, so I just lifted this up onto a piece of belt leather so that I can get this bale out of the way. Okay, wow. I guess I made that look easy, didn't I? Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and polish this um, again with Tripoli. And um, when I do that, I'm going to also um, polish on the front here so that I actually polish the tops of all of my wires. And um, uh, I'm going to try and show you what my polishing unit looks like, maybe with my phone. Okay. Okay, here's my expandable drum lapidary unit. This is the uh, belt that I grind all of the sides of my settings on gold, silver, everything. And uh, it's just such a workhorse of a tool. I've had this for 40 years. It's ugly as sin, and I love it like a child. Yeah, and then right over here... I've got my uh, Baldur motor. This is where I do all my polishing. Uh, obviously, I need to vacuum it out right now, but uh, anyway, that's it. Well, for goodness sakes, I almost forgot that I was going to show you how to make jump rings. Um, let's do that right now. So, and by the way, I used a piece of leather to burnish my uh, piece into the setting, just to set it on. Alright, so I have this little handy tool um, that helps me to make jump rings. It has rods in all different sizes, and you just put the end of your wire through this little hole, and then... Um, the, the thing is designed to use like this, but I actually just hang on to it with the end and then wrap my wire uh, around, uh, around that rod to make my, um, my jump rings. Uh, and then to get them apart, it's not a problem. I also have leather uh, that I lay on my lap to catch my uh, sawdust in and uh, you can see here how much metal dust I catch and then that can go to the refiner so okay I'll use my lubricant my six op blade I use six op blades for almost everything and um, now Anyway, you get the idea. So here, here they are all sitting on my saw blade. Isn't that cool? All right. Well, here it is. It's all done. Pretty nice, huh? Hey, I think we should give this piece away 
to maybe do a drawing with all of the people that have signed up for the Thinkific classes. Yeah, let's do that. Ready to be worn.